ಸೋಲ್ by knowledge of the knower both the soul and super soul one can release the nectar of <coughs> life as explained in the second chapter the living entity is eternal this is also confirmed here there is no specific date at which the jiva was born nor can anyone trace of the history of the jivatma's manifestation from the spiritual world from the supreme lord therefore it is beginningless the vedic literature confirms this no jayate mrete vak vipaschit the nor the body is never born and never dies and is full of knowledge the supreme lord as the super soul is also stated in the vedic literature to be pradana kshetragna patir guneshah the chief nor of the body and the master of the three modes of material nature in the smriti it is also said dasa bhuto hare reva nanyasvaiva kadachana the living entities are eternally in the service of the supreme lord this is also confirmed by lord chaitanya in his teachings therefore the description of brahman mentioned in this verse is in relation to the individual soul and when the word brahman is applied to the living entity it is to be understood that he is vignana brahman as opposed to ananda brahman ananda brahma yeah, ananda brahma he is the supreme person brahman personality of god it in this verse propati is saying that this refers to jiva brahman hmm? <coughs> the spirit not the supreme spirit and mm. uh, jiva also lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world that is why we don't belong to this material world but because of our affection towards this material energy we are we experience all happenings of this material world as real as happening to us while well, it's actually not happening to us so the spirit soul okay so we have to remember always that we are brahman we have this we have the same quality as the supreme lord but we are in so much illusion that it is very very difficult to actually even remember this forget about realizing it even remembering the fact that we are not material is itself a big effort so only when we come to the platform of realization uh, we we can actually uh, i mean really understand this theoretically it's just not possible okay 1314 sarvata pani padam tat sarvato kshi shiro mukham sarvata shruti mal loke sarvam avrutya tishtati everywhere are his hands and legs his eyes heads and faces and he has ears everywhere in this way the super soul exists pervading everything so this verse refers to super soul previous verse referred to soul as the sun exists diffusing its unlimited rays so does the super soul supreme person of god he exists in his all pervading form and in him exist all individual living entities beginning from the first great creature brahma down to the small ants there are unlimited heads legs hands and eyes and unlimited living entities all are existing in and on the super soul so all are existing in the super soul because we are all part of the supreme and on means they are dependent on the super soul because in this material world without super soul no jiva can act mm, so they are dependent on the super soul and they are present in the super soul therefore the super soul is all pervading the individual soul however cannot say that he has his hands eyes legs everywhere this is not possible if he thinks that under ignorance he is not conscious <clears throat> that his hands and legs are diffused all over but when he attains to pro- proper knowledge he will come to that stage this thinking his thinking is contradictory meaning we are in illusion so we don't realize that our hands and legs are everywhere but when we come to proper knowledge uh, we 
we realize that we are everywhere. So we have become super soul. And this means that the individual soul having become conditioned by material nature is not supreme. So Prabhupada is saying, this is contradictory. You cannot be in illusion now and suddenly then you can realize uh, that you are everywhere. That means you are supreme, but you are in illusion. Uh, so it's not possible because individual soul is conditioned. So it's not supreme. The supreme is different from the individual soul. The supreme Lord can extend his hand without limit. The individual soul cannot. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord says that if anyone offers him a flower, fruit, little water, he accepts it. If the Lord is a far distance away, far away from earth, he can extend his... Uh, how can he accept things? This is the omnipotence of the Lord. Even though he is situated in his own abode, far, far away from earth, he can extend his hand to accept what anyone offers. That is his potency. The Brahma, Brahma Samhita, it is said, Boloka eva satya kilatma bhutaha. Although he is always engaged in pastimes in his transcendental planet, he is all-pervading. The individual soul cannot claim that he is all-pervading. Therefore, this verse describes the super soul and not the individual soul. Okay, 13-15. Sarvendriya guna bhasam sarvendriya vivarjitam asaktam sarva chaiva nirgunam guna bhoktricha The super soul is the original source of all senses. Hmm, super soul is the original source of all senses. Yet he is without senses. He is unattached. Although he is the maintainer of all living entities. He transcends the modes of nature and at the same time he is the master of the modes of material nature. Hmm, so super soul is the original source of all senses. Normally we don't speak about this. Yeah, then he is unattached although he is maintainer. He transcends the modes and he is the master of the modes. Okay. Supreme Lord, although the source of all senses of living entities doesn't have material senses, actually the individual souls have spiritual senses, but in conditioned life they are covered with the material elements and therefore the sense activities are exhibited through matter. The Supreme Lord's senses are not so covered, his senses are transcendental and are therefore nirguna. Guna means material modes, but his senses are without material covering. It should be understood that his senses are not exactly like ours. Although he is the source of all our sensory activities, he has his transcendental senses, which are uncontaminated. This is very nicely explained in the Svetha Ashwara Upanishad in the verse, Apani Padu Javano Grihita. Supreme Person of Godhead has no hands which are materially contaminated, but he has his hands and accepts whatever service is offered to him. That is the distinction between conditioned soul and super soul. He has no material eyes, but he has eyes. Otherwise, how could he see? He sees everything, past, present, future. He lives within the heart of the living being and he knows that we have done what we have done in the past, what we are doing now and what is awaiting us in the future. It is also confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita. He knows everything, but no one knows him. It is said that the Supreme Lord has no legs like us, but he can travel throughout space because he has spiritual legs. In other words, the Lord is not impersonal. He has eyes, hands, legs and everything else. And because we are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, we also have these things, these things, but his hands, legs, eyes and senses are not contaminated by material nature. Bhagavad Gita also confirms that when the Lord appears, he appears as he is by his internal potency. He is not contaminated by material energy because he is a Lord of material energy. In the Vedic literature, we find that his whole embodiment is spiritual. as has written a form called Satchinanda Vigraha. He is full of all opulence. He is a proprietor of all wealth and owner of all energy. He is the most intelligent and is full of knowledge. These are some of the symptoms of the Supreme Person of Godhead. He is the maintainer of all living entities and the witness of all activity. As far as we can understand from Vedic literature, the Supreme Lord is always transcendental. Although we don't see his head, face, hands or legs, he has them. And when we are elevated to the transcendental situation, we can see the Lord's form. Perfection of bhakti. Due to materially contaminated senses, we cannot see his form. Therefore, the impersonalists who are still materially affected cannot understand the person who got it. So this is nice. You know, when we reach the perfection of bhakti, we can actually see the Lord's form, his qualities, his pastimes, paraphernalia, everything we can see. Hmm. Actually, it's uh, revealed uh, in books by Acharya. So, Krishna in the stage of um, Prema, he actually, a devotee can experience, can see Krishna's form, 
can smell Krishna's fragrance, can touch Krishna's body, and so on. So, in the same, in the self-same body, because the body would have been completely spiritualized at that stage. So, literally, a person, a devotee who is reached perfection, he, for him, really, there is nothing like death, because his body is already spiritualized. Uh, but he will still, as a just as a matter of rules and regulations of this material world, he will leave his so-called material body behind. But he is actually fully spiritualized. So this is all amazing uh, secrets of bhakti. Thirteen sixteen. Bhai rantasya bhutanam acharam charam evacha. The Supreme Truth exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and the non-moving. Because he is subtle, he is beyond the power of material senses to see or to know. Although far, far away, he is also near to all. So this is very similar to Ishopanishad verses. In Vedic literature, we understand that Narayana, the Supreme Person, is residing both outside and inside of every living being is present in both the material and spiritual and material worlds. Although he is far, far away, still he is near to us. That's the statement of the Vedic literature. Asi no duram rajati shayano yati yati sarvataha. And because he is always engaged in transcendental bliss, we cannot understand how he is enjoying his full opulence. And we cannot see or understand with these material senses. Therefore, in the Vedic language, it is said that to understand him, our material and mind and senses cannot act. But one who has purified his mind and senses by practicing Krishna consciousness in devotional service can see him constantly. It is confirmed in Brahma Samhita that the devotee who has developed love for the Supreme God can see him always without cessation. It is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita that he can be seen and understood only by devotional service. Bhaktiya Tva Ananya Shakya Ananya Shakya Okay, if anybody has any questions, you can ask, but generally these are straightforward verses. 13.17 Avibhaktam cha bhuteshu vibhaktam iva chastitam bhuta bhartra cha tajkneyam grasishnu prabhu vishnu cha Although the super soul appears to be divided among all beings, he is never divided. He is situated as one. Although he is the maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. He doesn't have any attachment to the living entities. The Lord is situated in everyone's heart as a super soul. Does this mean that he has become divided? No. Actually, he is one. The example is given of the sun. Sun at the meridian is situated in its place. But if one goes for 5,000 miles in all directions and asks, where is the sun? Everyone will say that it is shining on his head. In the Vedic literature, the example is given to show that although he is undivided, he is situated as if divided. Yeah. Uh, also, in the 17th or 18th chapter, it is said that this also, mm, knowledge in ignorance, knowledge in passion. Mm. Mm, and so, there also this description comes. Also, it is said in Vedic literature that one Vishnu is present everywhere by his omnipotence. Just that the sun appears in many places to many persons. And the Supreme Lord, although the maintainer of every living entity, devours everything at the time of annihilation. This was confirmed in the 11th chapter when the Lord said that he had come to devour all the warriors assembled at Kurukshetra. He also mentioned that in the form of time he devours also. He is annihilator, the killer of all. When this creation, he develops all from their original state. At the time of annihilation, he devours them. The Vedic hymns confirm the fact that he is the origin of all living entities and the rest of all. Uh, after creation, everything rests in his omnipotence. And after annihilation, everything again returns to rest in him. Hmm. Here rest means depends. Here annihilation, everything again returns to rest in him, literally rests, uh, like resides. These are the confirmations of Vedic hymns. Yato va imani bhutani jayante yena jatani jivanti yat prayanti abhisham abhisham Vishanti tad brahma tad vignasasva. Vijignasasva.
ಇನ್ನೀತಿ ಜ್ಯೋತಿಷಾಮಿ ತಜ್ಜ್ಯೋತಿಸ್ತಮಸ ಪರಂ ಉಚ್ಯತೆ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಜ್ಞೇಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಕಮ್ಯ ಪ್ರತಿ ಸರ್ವಸ್ವಿಷ್ಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಲಿಮಿನಿಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಡಾರ್ಕ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಗೋಲ್ ಆಫ್ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಈಸ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಹಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಸೂಪರ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೈಟ್ ಇನ್ ಆಲ್ ಲುಮಿನಿಸ್ ಆಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸನ್ ಮೂನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಸ್ In Vedic later we find that in the spiritual kingdom there is no need of sun or moon because the effulgence of the Supreme Lord is there. In the material world that Brahma Jyoti is covered by the Mahat Tattva. Therefore in the material world we require assistance of sun, moon, electricity etc. for light. But in spiritual world there is no need of such things. It is clearly stated in the Vedic literature that because of his luminous effulgence everything is illuminated. illuminated. It is clear therefore that his situation is not in the material world. Uh, that means that situation there is not here he is not situated in the material world he is situated in the spiritual world which is far far away in the spiritual sky that is also confirmed in the vedic literature aditya varnam tamasap parastat he is just like the sun eternally luminous but is far far beyond the darkness of this material world his knowledge is transcendental the vedic literature confirms that brahman is concentrated transcendental knowledge concentrated transcendental knowledge means that uh concentrated drink thick meaning there is nothing else there is only transcendental knowledge full of transcendental knowledge the one is anxious to be transferred to the spiritual world knowledge is given with supreme lord who is situated in everyone's heart one vedic mantra says tam ha devam atma buddhi prakasham umukshur vai sharanam aham prapadye one must surrender unto the supreme person of god and if he at all wants liberation as far as the goal of un- ultimate knowledge is concerned it is also confirmed in the vedic literature tam eva viditva ati mrutyum meti only by knowing him can one surpass the boundary of birth and death he is situated in everyone's heart as a supreme controller the supreme has legs and hands distributed everywhere and this cannot be said of the individual soul therefore there are two knowers the individual and the super soul one's hands and legs are distributed locally but krishna's hands and legs are distributed everywhere this is confirmed in shvetashvara upanishad sarvasya prabhu meesha ishanam sarvasya sharanam brahat dream person who got it super soul is the prabhu or master of all living entities therefore he is the ultimate shelter of all living entities so there is no denying the fact that supreme super soul and the individual soul are always different Prabhupada here is using supreme super soul because to just make it very clear that the super soul is supreme. Individual soul is individual. So they are different. Nineteen. Itikshetram tatha gnanam neyam choktam samasataha nadvakta yetad viknaya madbhava yopa padyate That's the field of, field of activities. kshetra knowledge knowledge gnana noble gneya have been summarily described by me only my devotees can understand this thoroughly and this attain to my nature the lord has described in summary the body knowledge and noble this knowledge is of three things the knower noble and the process of knowing combined these are called vignana science of so vignana also has multiple meanings like atma has multiple meanings so here vignana prabhupada is saying is the science of knowledge uh, which is vignana as in science but vignana also means realized knowledge hmm? perfect knowledge can be understood by the unalloyed devotees of the lord directly others are unable to understand the monis say that the ultimate stage in the that at the ultimate stage these three items become one but the devotees do not accept this knowledge and development of knowledge mean understanding oneself in krishna consciousness understanding oneself in krishna consciousness uh, we cannot simply understand this knowledge and develop this knowledge so we have to we can only understand in krishna consciousness meaning we are if we are engaged in bhakti we are being led by material consciousness but as soon as we transfer all consciousness to krishna's activities and realize that krishna is everything then we attain real knowledge in other words knowledge is nothing but the preliminary stage of understanding devotional service perfectly preliminary stage of understanding devotional service perfectly which means knowledge is also related to devotional service only 
only the nirakara brahman knowledge we are not interested in but we are interested in the real knowledge because it is the preliminary stage of understanding devotion service perfectly that's what prabhupada is saying now to summarize one may understand that verses 6 and 7 beginning from mahabhutani and continuing to cheta dhritihi chetana dhritihi analyze material elements and certain manifestations of the symptoms of life is combined to form the body or field of activities verses 8 through 12 describe process of knowledge um and then the verses 13 through 18 uh they describe the soul and super soul so these three things have been discussed so far these three items have been described field of activity process of understanding and soul and super soul it is especially described here that only the analog devotees of the lord can understand these three items clearly so for these devotees bhagavad gita is fully useful mm-hmm. not useful for others meaning because they want to understand mm-hmm. if propa had not given us this purpose what would we have understood now it is only for devotees because it will come through devotees in parampara it is they who can attain the supreme goal the nature of supreme lord krishna in other words only devotees and not others can understand bhagavad gita and derive the desired result Twenty. Prakriti impurusham chayva vidhyanadi ubhavapi vika ramscha gunam chayva vidhi prakriti sambhavan. Material nature and the living entity should be understood to be beginningless. The transformations and the modes of matter are products of material nature. Material nature and living entity should be understood to be beginningless. Their transformation, transformation of material nature. and the modes of matter are products of material nature um by knowledge given in this chapter one can understand the body know of the body uh the body is a field of activity composed of material nature the individual soul that is embodied in enjoying the activities of body is the purusha or the living entity so the soul is also sometimes called purusha is one knower and the other is of this other is the super soul of course it is to be understood that both super soul and the individual entity are different manifestations of the supreme person of god it the living being is a category of his energy and the super soul is a category of personal expansion uh, both material nature and the living entity are eternal that is to say that they existed before the creation material manifestation is from the energy of the supreme lord and so also are the living entities Uh, but the living entities are of superior energy both the living entities and material nature existed before this cosmos was manifested material nature was absorbed in the supreme person of god mahavishnu and when it was required it was manifested by the agency of mahatatva so this we'll read in bhagavatam uh, second third cantos similarly the living entities are also in him and because they're conditioned they're averse to serving the supreme lord in the sea living entities are also in him we are in him but we are still ours thus they are not allowed to enter into the spiritual sky but with the coming forth of the material nature these living entities are again given a chance to act in the material world and prepare themselves to enter into the spiritual world that is a mystery of this material creation actually the living entity is originally spiritual part and parcel of the supreme lord but due to his rebellious nature he is conditioned within material nature hmm. And so he thinks that he is part of this material world it really does not matter how these living entities or superior entities or the supreme lord have come in contact with the material nature the supreme person of god it knows however how and why this actually took place the scripture the lord says that those attracted by the material nature are undergoing a hard struggle for existence this we all know but we should know it with certainty from the descriptions of these few verses that all transformations and influences of the material nature by the three modes are also productions of material nature all transformations and variety in respect to living entities are due to the body as far as spirit is concerned living entities are all the same so living entities are non different but their transformations are due to the body hmm. so we should not think that this transformations refer to transformation of soul because soul doesn't change Here, the transformation of living entity are refers to the transformations due to the body. Yeah. 
ியல் <laughs> but we are the cause this is very very important so which means that our desire is what has brought us here our desire is what can get us out of here and that way we are the cause the different manifestations of the body and senses among the living entities are due to material nature so all the bodies are due to material nature 84 lakh species uh, they are all creations of material nature they arise from different sensual pleasures of the living entity who desires to live in this body or that so accordingly these the bodies are developed when he is put into different bodies he enjoys different kinds of happiness and distress his material happiness and distress are due to his body and not to himself as he is due here means are happening to his body hmm? the happiness and distress are happening to his body and not to himself huh? uh, but it is due to as in a, the cause is the jiva only the living entity in his original state there is no doubt of enjoyment therefore that is his real state because of the desire to lord it over material nature he is in the material world in the spiritual world there is no such thing in the spiritual world is pure but in the material world everyone is struggling hard to acquire different kinds of pleasures for the body it might be more clear to state that this body is the effect of the senses the senses are instruments for gratifying desire uh, uh, body is the effect of senses means body is really made up of senses senses are the act, active uh, you know senses are what are active right um, so it is the effect as in it is the result of the senses um, based on the senses body is formed or body is formed of the senses like that senses are instruments for gratifying desire now the sum total uh, body and instrument senses is offered by material nature as will be clear in the next verse the living entity is blessed or damned with circumstances according to his past desire and activity so this is the key according to one's desires and activities material nature places one in various residential quarters the being himself is the cause of his attaining such residential quarters and his attendant enjoyment and suffering once placed in some particular kind of body he comes under the control of nature because the body being matter acts according to the laws of nature a dog has to bark and dog cannot bray or mew right because it is under the control of nature <clears throat> at that time the living entity has no power to change that law suppose an entity is put into the body of a dog as soon as he is put into the body body he must act like a dog he cannot act otherwise the living entity is put in the body of a hog and he is forced to eat stool and act like a hog similarly if the living entity is put into the body of a demigod he must act, or act according to his body this is the law of nature but in all circumstances super soul is within individual soul is explained in vedas dwa suparna sayu sayuja sakhaya supreme lord is so kind of the living entity that he always accompanies the individual soul and in all circumstances is present as the super soul or paramatma hmm so it is we have to remember that we are the hetu we are the cause of our sufferings and enjoyments but whenever we are stuck in sufferings and enjoyment we always point our hand and fingers towards the lord oh krishna why are you giving me this trouble krishna is not giving the trouble huh? we ourselves are giving ourselves this trouble and that foolishness we don't come out of that foolishness we again engage in sense gratification knowing fully well that this attempts to sense gratify ourselves is what is put us into this miserable suffering condition and sometimes devotees in devotees life they don't have much suffering so they think ah okay what is this you know, what suffering there is no suffering it's good enjoyable material life 
but that will we have to realize if you have to go back to krishna we have to realize that this material world is miserable and that i am not this body now without realizing these things how can we go back to krishna which means that we will have to go through situations which are going to teach us thus and because teach us means what theory we are learning how do we put into practice and we have to have situations where we will get tested to see if our knowledge is actually we are whether we are applying our knowledge so we will end up in suffering today or tomorrow as in that is the only way we will know whether we are passing the test or failing the test and if we are failing the test krishna will give us another opportunity another opportunity and so on so just because today everything is fine doesn't mean that unless of course uh, one caveat here if we don't want success perfection in this life then it's okay then it yeah everything might be good fine happy happy ending another body and so on and so forth but if one wants to end this journey of me in the material world and want to go back to krishna in this life the end of this life itself then there will be tests and difficulties that one will have to face and so we have to make a choice uh, so we have to be very clear whether i want perfection in one life or i want i am okay to go through it in multiple lives that choice is ours and accordingly we will have to we will face life of course i mean see for us we might have enough sufferings generally enough sufferings and happiness that will be good enough to test our gnana and application of knowledge but in some very rare case some extremely fortunate souls who are like born with a silver spoon uh, and everything going fine might be if they desire to achieve want to achieve perfection in this life they might have to go through some uh, sufferings that krishna will create because his karmic situation is very you know conducive is very favorable for him um, but then if with those favorable conditions he will not be able to realize all the knowledge or apply all this knowledge so he might be tested with some situations created by the lord mercy uh, but we should we should understand this saying that this suffering without going through suffering we cannot really see how much we have uh, you know whether we are really able to apply or not otherwise we can give big big classes uh, no use um, because the real test is these this you know practical tests that come in our life okay so i'll close here if anybody so one question i had is there any level of perfection also or perfection has same meaning for everyone so like uh, some person might say that okay in one life you can achieve perfection but um, is there any quality of perfection krishna also prema. krishna prema when we talk about perfection we talk about krishna prema Hmm. but uh, krishna Others might talk about different things like uh, gnanis might talk about something else yeah these may talk about something else but when we talk from perspective bhakti perfection means krishna prema yeah uh, so so then there are lot of stages right there are seven stages so you no, have that is okay that is in after reaching see anyway those stages cannot be uh, experienced in material body so when come, one comes to krishna prema stage then he anyway he is out of this material world okay so basically yeah. we are saying that even if person quits body in ruchi stage it he or she might go to goloka is it not or? ruchi ruchi nahi baba prema prema so ruchi aa sakti bhava prema uh, but achieving the bhava stage in one life also suppose it might not be possible in spite of every best effort which they would makes right why so like we normally so a person normally comes into krishna consciousness let's say at an age of 25 right or if a person has got a krishna consciousness no no no, no, no. all the logic is not required prabhu see simple logic is krishna prema is not our effort krishna prema is a little bit of our effort and a lot of mercy hmm Okay, and the, when, if you come to Krishna consciousness at the age of twenty-five, we don't know when we, where we ended last life. No, so none of these are. So that is why it is said that we don't never look at anybody and 
make a judgment saying that this person is at this stage or whether he will achieve perfection or whether he is good bad ugly as a we don't evaluate vaishnavas because that is only known between that atma and krishna nobody else knows actually atma also sometimes will not know only bhagwan knows what what kind of devotee we are where we are how far we are all that no we don't have to worry about that see all we need to do we should, this we should understand very very clearly if we think saying that it is not possible in one life then it is becomes our desire it becomes our desire implicitly saying that i don't want to achieve perfection in one life mm. but one who is greedy lovely make a molyam one who is greedy to achieve it in one life he doesn't bother about his qualification that is why it is called greed a person who is greedy doesn't think whether he deserves to get it or not he just says no no i just want it that's it mm. right and when we have that greed and we are sincere and we are humble and we are putting whatever required effort as advised by guru and acharyas then ultimately it is in the hands of krishna because this perfection is not our endeavor perfection is a lot of mercy so there is nothing like not possible if we mm. say not possible that means that we are we are saying krishna cannot do it yeah it's atheism so we have to be very careful that is why ac philosophy has to be very clearly understood hmm? nothing we can do by our ability nothing zero literally zero we just think that we are doing something but that's just illusion mm. so basically even the intermediate stages like bhava ruchi that also is dependent we are should be dependent on the mercy of the lord that up to the lord that okay he can actually if he desires then we can actually achieve all this thing in one single life also with that temperament we should do devotion is that yeah, we should do devotion with the temperament that if i am able to speak one word today that is krishna's mercy yeah that has to be the mood for, i mean how can we perfection ruchi asakti and all are like first we have to understand our real position our real position is that we are helpless we are absolutely helpless totally 100% dependent on the supreme lord first we have to understand and realize that real position of ours only when we realize saying that there is really nothing in my hands and that everything is dependent on the supreme lord then we will start our humble attempt to try and please the lord saying that okay krishna like a child uh, you know with his broken words he calls out the names of uh, name of father father becomes happy so with our toddler type kind of effort that we are putting we hope that krishna becomes pleased mm. that is all there is nothing else to it there's nothing like somebody like that is why i was saying it's not that okay if somebody is giving is doing very nice kirtan somebody is giving a very nice class doesn't mean anything that is just like arjuna's uh, you know power which was given to him by krishna and krishna pulled it back when it was not required that's it so hmm. it's not our own ability or it's not our is nothing it doesn't mean anything Uh, so we have to we have to be very very clear that okay i am in a fallen state but i don't want to remain in this state that much we have to be very clear i want to get out and i want to really get out like i'm like greedy about getting out that's all that is what is required yeah and then everything else is in krishna's hands and if he shows mercy then we will make progress otherwise we will not but generally it is also said that krishna is not unreasonable and so which means that if we are putting some sincere direction in the sincere effort in the right direction that ami buddhi yogam tam and you know he will help us to make progress yes sir okay yeah. okay hari krishna hari krishna Like, correct uh, some uh, basic uh, understanding yeah mm-hmm. required like what is actually material nature like uh, what i understood actually like material nature means uh, um, basically prakriti. in the universe are uh, correct prakriti in the universe excluding all the living entities and su- supreme personality of god 
माइनस में भी काला एवरीथिंग इज प्रकृति प्रकृति इज व्हाट दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड इज मेड अप ऑफ करेक्ट फाइव एलिमेंट्स बेसिकली पंचभूमो या पंचमा भूत देन इंद्रिया देन तन्मात्रा एवरीथिंग इज मटेरियल एनीथिंग व्हिच इज मटेरियल इज प्रकृति या लाइक यू सेड इंक्लूडिंग थ्री मोड्स हां थ्री मोड्स आर मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ प्रकृति प्रकृति मैनिफेस्ट एज थ्री मोड्स so it's like uh, how do we explain um uh like a government has functions through home minister transport minister etc etc it's like that like material nature functions through these modes oh. which means everything in material world belongs to one of these modes is functioning in one of these modes is in one of these modes so uh-huh. in this material world everything functions by this under the control of these three modes a mixture of the, the three modes yeah yeah okay like so basically in that case like you basically entire universe minus living entities minus uh, supreme person of god is prakriti something like that mm-hmm. yes and no because the entire universe is also coming from yeah, the uh, supreme power yeah, yeah, yes, but uh, technically energy. yeah technically yes that is correct correct but, so yeah so living entity is actually superior to material nature yes that is correct yeah and living entity is very like very infinite like small all correct but material nature is very huge and very no, powerful no 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 uh, because spiritual energy because soul is part and parcel of krishna soul might be small in size but it is very powerful soul has the i mean soul is qualitatively one with brahman one with the supreme lord this quantity is less but material nature is powerful but she is standing behind the lord so material nature because yes she is very powerful but that is nothing to do with the size of the super of the soul or size of material nature but material energy is lord has made the material energy powerful because material energy has to prevent uh, you know hold back these uh, you know misbehaving jeevas in this material world so she is very powerful you can't just cheat her or just jump over her right because the lord has empowered her to be very powerful but the lord uh, because we are actually directly part and parcel of krishna we are technically more powerful than material nature but because we are attached to attracted to material nature we become subordinate we become like come under her control okay. but actually the jiva is very powerful because he is qualitatively one with this lord but material nature is not qualitatively one with the lord material nature is called inferior energy that is why it is called inferior it is inferior spiritual energy is called superior energy and jiva is called tatastha because he can either turn towards <coughs> superior energy or towards inferior energy when jiva turns towards superior energy he becomes more powerful than than the external energy see when jiva becomes so powerful that he gets astha siddhis he can control material nature actually one of the astha siddhis is that you can destroy and recreate a universe i mean you have you will have control over material nature itself so jiva is is anyway more powerful than material nature but just that because he is associated or he thinks that he belongs to this material world he becomes comes under her control that is why superior energy is under the control of inferior energy very strange normally doesn't happen right thank you and one more thing actually many places proper rights so jiva living entity misuses uh, material yeah. nature misuses means actually for the sense enjoyment we are misusing Correct. that is the only thing or uh, Yeah. No, that is the only thing. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. We'll conclude. 
ओके वांचा कल्पतर व्यस्त कृपा सिंधु व्यवच्छ पतिता नाम भावने विवश्नो विभु नमो नमः हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू हरे कृष्णा थैंक यू